Fitzpatrick is a world-renowned multimedia artist and celebrated Chicago resident. He's currently exhibiting his work in the Cleve Carney Museum of Art at College of DuPage. Growing up in Villa Park, Illinois, Tony began his creative life at COD, taking acting, writing, and drawing classes. He credits the college with giving him direction. In the fall of 2021, he was commissioned to create two murals for Glen Ellen's downtown that coincide with this latest gallery exhibit, Jesus of Western Avenue. I was a student at College of DuPage in 1978 and 79. And that was, it was a way different deal than what it is now. I mean, none of this was here. It looked like a big brown rusted warehouse. It looked like nothing so much as an Ikea that they forgot to paint uh, blue and yellow. You could sense even from, you know, that kind of skeletal and humble beginning, uh, this was a place with purpose. Um, I had wonderful theater teachers here. I had uh, Richard Holgate and Jack Weissman uh, Jody Briggs, uh, Craig Berger, and uh, they each taught me a, a different thing uh, about acting. And at the same time, I was uh, taking painting and drawing. I had a, a marvelous teacher named Pamela Lowry, um, who was here for opening day, and it just made my day. Uh, another guy named uh, John Lemon, he'd show us Giorgio Morandi, and uh, all these uh, in incredible artists who not only uh, rendered well, um, but also were capable of teaching you how to see. He was the first guy who ever mentioned these artists to me, you know, I mean, I kind of got my compass right at College DuPage in that I decided what I wanted to do with my life and what was worth doing. And I, I will always uh, be grateful to this, this school for that. I rented a, a storefront on Villa Avenue for 75 bucks a month. It was right next to the uh, then shuttered uh, Ovaltine factory. This is my safe place. I can make art here. I can, I can do whatever I want. And I thought, I'll open a gallery. You know, how hard could it be, right? <laughs> and, um, and we started a little community there. And uh, I'd given a show to this, this a lovely girl who'd gone to Pratt Institute, uh, uh, Linda Federico, who, who made gorgeous uh, drawings and paintings. So she said, well, you know, I'm going back to New York, come and visit me, you know. And I did about three months later, and I had uh, two knapsacks with the new invention, bubble wrap, you know, and all, all my slate drawings. She showed me around some galleries and all the dealers I was showing that, that would take the time to look at the slate drawings would say, you know, I really like this. I just don't know if they're there yet, you know? And uh, so what the, what the hell does that mean, you know? So I went to Washington Square, you know, and uh, I saw these other guys selling their artwork up. Just line up three or four of them and work on another one. So th th this kid comes walking up and he's got the really cool glasses, uh, kind of a crew cut and I can tell this guy is like way more hip than me, you know? And uh, he goes, what do you get for those? And until that moment, I'd, I'd never even thought about it. So I thought, you know, I'll swing for the fence. And I'm like, 50 bucks. And he goes, I want those three. Are you gonna be here tomorrow? I said, yeah, you coming back? He goes, yeah, I'm gonna bring a friend with me, you know? So the next day, there I am, you know? Sure enough, he comes bopping up, and he comes bopping up with like maybe kind of the coolest guy I ever saw in my life, you know, as a, a, a black dude with these short braids, and you know, he, he's just walking through the park smoking a joint. It's like, you know, it's like nobody can see him or something, you know? And uh, he goes, uh, you got more of these? I said, yeah, I want those two. You, do you have more with you? I said, yeah, back where I'm staying, I do, you know? They're, standing a few feet away and they're kind of talking and the one guy goes, uh, uh, you know, there's an easier way to do this than this. 
And I said, you know, do tell, you know. And he goes, do you got a half an hour? I said, I got nothing but time, you know. <laughs> so we start walking down um, 7th Avenue, you know, and it was only a few blocks away, but it took us about a half an hour because every five feet, somebody would walk up and air kiss and hug and stuff like this. And I was thinking, I don't know who these guys are, but they're somebody. And uh, finally, we get to a gallery that I'd been to two days before. The lady that was sitting there was the same lady who didn't even look up from her Vanity Fair when I, when I wanted to show her drawing. And she goes, we only look at slots. We only look on Monday. You can pick them up on Tuesday. The same woman, all of a sudden, she's like, you know, practically kills herself getting out from behind the desk, walks up, kiss, 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 kiss. I don't know who these guys are, but they're somebody, you know. It was Keith Haring and Jean-Michel Basquiat. And they had uh, no reason to be kind to me at all. They just did it. So she gave me a show um, six months later. It sold out. Uh, got a nice review in the Times. And the last seven pieces were bought by a movie director named Jonathan Demme, who then became, you know, my lifelong friend. So it's like, I like to tell people that luck is the intersection of preparation and hard work and the music of chance. Three months later, I did an album cover for the soundtrack of Something Wild. And about a year later, I did the album cover for uh, uh, the Neville Brothers, Yellow Moon. And from then on, I never did anything other than make art for a living. What I would tell anybody watching this, particularly students, you find that there are a lot of, uh, you know, trapdoors and tripwires and, and things that can distract you. Uh, the most important thing is, is stay on your, your mission. And, you know, don't, uh, even if you want to be a visual artist, make sure you feed that thing. Make sure you read. Make sure you read novels and poetry and read about politics because it's also about you. And uh, cultivate your, your voice with as many tools as you can. Well, one thing I will tell students, do the hard thing. That's how you grow.